alongside the new uh, Sri Lankan consulate in Melbourne. Um, the reason we are here is to highlight the, uh, the relationship, I think, between the Australian government and the Sri Lankan government. And to a large extent, that relationship is primarily concerned, really, with the issue of uh, sending asylum seekers, mainly Tamils, but also Sinhalese, who have been uh, threatened by the current Rajapaksa regime, the same regime responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of people during decades-long civil war. Those in office in uh, Sri Lanka have never been brought to account for the crimes committed during that civil war, yet our government, for some reason, sees fit to do business with the Rajapaksa regime. Our government plays a role largely in covering up not only past crimes against humanity or war crimes, but also in denying the ongoing human rights abuses that are taking place in Sri Lanka. And this is something that we need to speak out about. We need to let the Australian community know that there is not going to be a uh, absence of scrutiny about this relationship. We are going to be highlighting and talking about the issue of torture that will be ongoing. At this point in time, our government is sending some people back to danger, back to Colombo, where recently, I believe, a, a man was put through grave torture. His testicles were crushed during that torture. We don't see much of that on the Australian media. We don't see recognition of that by our government. We don't see, for example, recognition by Brendan O'Connor, our immigration minister, of a recent case of a man who goes by the name of Puma, who returned from Colombo with seven large um, marks on his back that were put there in custody in Colombo when he was uh, had his skin uh, disfigured by hot metal rods. So our politicians do not want people to be aware of this. Our politicians want a cosy, strategic relationship that allows them to return uh, people who are threatened and persecuted to danger. And I'd like to uh, play a song, it may not be very loud, but I'll play a song maybe too. Uh, one for Selva and one for Rangini, both of whom are uh, Tamil people and they have been held in detention in Australia. My name is Selva Kula Cheldon and I'm fighting for my life. 37 months I've been held with my child, I miss my wife. Escape the clutches of the men with guns, Sri Lanka was my home. Australia put me in a prison camp, now it's three years gone. Do they treat me like a worthless human being? Do they see me as a worthless human being? Well, they do not know who. girl wasn't even born across the raging sea. A daily voice on the telephone is all she knows of me. I hold a photo in my hand and I dream of a better time. How do I explain my dad's in jail when I'm guilty of no crime? Human being, we all need.
The Hardys claim she's a security threat. The town will prove them lies. Attention yeah. center at Villawood. They try to imagine a life that's you. This could all be over, you must understand. Signature from the minister and Jeannie, we have her. Melbourne in a refugee campaign. I'm involved in the Refugee Action Collective. And as part of that campaign, the fight for, ta for justice for Tamil refugees is at the forefront of this campaign. Now I'm glad we're here today as this building is christened, as the uh, relationship with the uh, Australian government and the Rajapaksa government in Sri Lanka is strengthened. But we are here today to let them know that the world knows of the genocide and atrocities and abuses that go on in Sri Lanka. The United Nations says there's serious, very serious allegations, serious uh, questions to be answered in regards to the war crimes committed during the massacre the massacre in 2008. In 2008, more people died in Sri Lanka than the war in Iraq. And that tells you something about the brutality of the, the brutality against the Tamil population in Sri Lanka. Now, the other thing you're here for as well, of course, is for the refugees here in Australia and standing up for in solidarity and fighting for the right of the 1,200 Tamil and Sri, Lankan, and Sri Lankan refugees, majority being Tamil, who have been deported by the Australian government back to danger. Now, stories we are getting in touch with and finding out from the families of those people who have been deported back to Sri Lanka, and yet they have been handed straight over to the hands of the Rajapaksa regime, and yes, they are landing straight in prison. Yes, they are being tortured. This is a fact. This is the reality of the refugees that Australia is being sent back. It is absolutely disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting that the Australian government supports the Rajapaksa regime. It's not just ignoring, it's open embrace. As you can see by, you know, the consulate being opened here, as you can see by Julia Gillard and Bob Carr, meeting yesterday with the head of state the Free the Tamil people Free the refugees Free the Tamil people Free the refugees Free the Tamil people Free the refugees Free the Tamil people Oh, well, you 